the refreshing taste of a cup of tea. <laughs> Not per se refreshing, much more cozy, but hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. But first, a word from today's sponsor, Galatea. If you didn't know about Galatea, it is a reading app that you can either download on iOS or on Android. Galatea features 400 published authors and over 2,000 books that over 1 million people every single month read. They feature books from all kinds of genres such as thrillers, romances, fantasy, and LGBTQ plus reads. They are translated into most of the major languages and they often also have audiobook features. So what's really cool about Galathea is that they have an immersive reading experience. So they have like all these different sounds. For instance, someone is like knocking on a door, you actually hear it whilst listening to the audiobook. And a book that I'd like to recommend to you to check out on Galathea is The Arrangement. For 23 year old main character meets one of the wealthiest people in New York City and she makes an arrangement with him. If she marries the billionaire's heartless son, Xavier, the billionaire will help our main character's father get the treatment that he needs. The only thing is that she cannot tell anyone about this deal and Xavier himself agrees to marry the person that his father chooses to clean up his scandalous public image and to secure his inheritance. Definitely check out Galatea. A link is in the description box down below. But now let's go on to my autumn TBR. September truly came around the corner and was like, Summer, who is she? We don't know her. And like the gloomy weather is like in full glory right now. On the one hand, I'm enjoying it because I feel like it gives me a really great excuse to just like sit in my home reading a book and to not feel guilty about like all the other extraordinary things people are doing outside because it's rainy, the weather is awful, but also it makes me feel a little bit depressed. <laughs> you know, you gotta make choices. You gotta make choices, but I do love the autumnal season. And I do have to confess that before the whole like book community, booktube thing, I definitely enjoyed the season way less, but like everyone is making it like feel so cozy. I'm loving autumn right now, actually. And as you guys can see, I have quite a pile of books behind me. And I also have quite some books in Utrecht, but I will film that a little later. So today I am here to share with you all my dark academia slash witchy bitch. <laughs> autumnal TBR. Basically, these are the books that I want to read in the fall time, and I'm so excited. Actually, I have already picked up one of my most anticipated releases of the year. I'm not gonna go into like detail about my thoughts on it because I'm currently creating like a really cozy autumnal reading vlog, reading some of my like books that I'm featuring here on this list. And that one is The Secret Society the secret? That's not true. The Society for Solos Girls by Laura Steven. And this is supposed to be like a Jacqueline Hyde inspired book. Am I saying that correctly? I don't know. I feel like that's like a classic book and I don't read classics. I also have no knowledge of like English literature and stuff like that. But in this book, we follow two main characters. We have Lottie and I have already forgotten the other character's name, Lottie and Alice. And they are both two new students who are going to this like private school. And 10 years ago at this private school, these four students were killed and the school closed down. It's just reopening. So Alice and Lottie are like obviously gonna attend it because that seems like such a good idea. But basically the two girls get haunted and they have to like figure out this mystery that's going on at the school. I wanted to share my thoughts on this book, but I'm trying to not do that and save that for the vlog. But I think you really want to hear my thoughts on this one. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> and now I will show you guys the books that I own here that are on my autumnal witchy bitch dark academia TBR. And let's just get the most obvious one out of the way, okay? You know, everyone's talking about this book and that is Babel by R.F. Kuang. So I did some research as to like whether this book is actually like a fantasy standalone or if it's gonna be part of a series and it's a standalone, or at least that's what I've heard on the internet and I'm very excited about that because fantasy books usually always come in series and as you all know, I'm really bad at finishing those. Probably the majority of you guys are as well. And for those who aren't, wow, I, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> this is Arv Kwong's newly most like anticipated release. Basically, this story takes place in the 1800s and we are following our main character, Robin. He has a Chinese mother and an unknown British father. And when I think 
all of his family is killed off. He gets like taken away by someone like a mysterious person to London and he will be attending the Royal Institute of Translation, AKA Babel, which is like a part of Oxford University. And basically he's really like trying to belong in this community as well. But even when he's like part of Babel, people still view him as like other as like not really part of the community. And basically Robin learns a lot, oh, there's my bookmark, <laughs> um, about the true nature of this institute, about this school of translation. So yeah, he learns about the history of translation, about magic and the colonization of the non-British world, which basically threatens everything that he holds dear. So dark academia, stuff like that is very focused on white people and white main characters. And I think RF Kuang is really gonna explore that, like how non-diverse, dark academia books are and really talk about that in this book. I've heard it's quite slow. It will take you a little bit to get into. It has like a very subtle but unique magic system. Again, these are all like the rumors that I've heard like spreading around the internet. <laughs> and it's quite a chunky boy. So I am gonna like make sure I'll be reading this book when I have a little bit more time off of school or like things are a little bit more slowing down because I wanna give this book all of my attention and time to appreciate it for what it probably is gonna be. An amazing book. <laughs> a book that I'm currently reading. Oh, I am, I'm so excited to continue. I cannot even speak. I'm so excited to continue on with it. And that is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Knives Out is one of my favorite movies. I watched it, I think like two years ago, three years ago when it came out in the cinemas and was absolutely obsessed with like the storytelling and the huge mystery. That like by itself, it was already like a huge recommendation, especially to watch during these autumnal dark academia times. And the plot of the Inheritance Games kind of reminds me of that. Okay, let me tell you, I'm sure a lot of you guys actually already know what this is about, especially since the third and final book in the trilogy came out, I think this month actually. But basically our main character, Avery, she has lost her mother. I believe her father is also not in the picture and she has like her half sister who is like taking care of her. Her life is not that like extravagant. She's definitely having a couple of struggles, but then all of a sudden she gets this like weird message from the Hawthorne family because their grandfather has appointed Avery to basically get everything in his will, receive all of his net worth, which is I believe $42 billion. And she basically gets to own his estate, but all of his offspring basically almost gets nothing in comparison to Avery while she doesn't even know this man. So why is she getting all of his fortune? The family is also obviously really quite pissed off by her, but it's a very mysterious family and I feel like there are a lot of secrets. I am currently on page 92. A big plus about this book by the way, it has extremely short chapters. I think on average the chapters are maybe like four pages each which is my kind of book because as a slow reader this makes me want to read another chapter and read one more because it's only just four pages and then in the end that like sums up to reading more pages than I would with longer chapters. Am I, am I making any sense? I don't know. This will have a big ass mention in the book with lots of hidden passages, passageways, pass, do you know what I mean? There are a lot of hidden trap doors and I think there are gonna be like a lot of riddles and I'm mostly just excited to figure out the mystery as to like, why does this billionaire give Avery all of his fortune and wealth. And if I'm really enjoying this book, if I'm loving it, which I think I will, I am really excited to pick up books two and three in this series. And I will definitely be reading it this year as well then. Then a book that I don't think a lot of people would consider to be dark academia, cozy fall vibes, but I'll explain why I'm putting this on my TBR. First of all, because I wanna read it, these upcoming ones, but it is The Toll by Neil Schusterman. And this is the third and final book. Not final maybe, because I think there's like a fourth book coming out with like short stories or like, I don't know if it's a prequel or just like some extra information, whatever. This is the third book in the original Scythe trilogy by Neil Schusterman, which I have been loving. Scythe is honestly a really, really great dystopian book about a society in which people don't naturally die and only the Scythes like glean the people that need to be died, that need to be died, that need to be killed because humanity does need to be contained a bit, but people not being able to die leads to very interesting situations. And you also learn about how corrupt that world is. And in book one, you follow Citra and Rowan. They are becoming like apprentice Scythes and the one who actually 
probably will become the scythe will have to glean the other now why i think this does kind of qualify as like a dark academia book it looks at like society in a very critical way it makes you reflect on the world which i think counts for dark academia and second of all the people who have become sides are actually like named after these huge figures in history and that does remind me a lot of like academia stuff <laughs> plus like i said i just desperately want to read this book it is again a chunker i think it's over 600 pages but thunderhead which is the previous book to this one so book number two ended on quite the cliffhanger and i'm just very curious to see where the plot is gonna go in book three and what's gonna happen to these characters and the fictional religion in this book will also play a prominent role in this one and i'm curious to see how that will be worked out now i will show you the last three books that are on my tbr it comes with a question as well so oh you can already see the cover <laughs> it is basically the truly devious trilogy by maureen johnson and if you've been following my channel for a little while you know that i read these two books in the trilogy already i absolutely devoured truly devious and the vanishing stair three years ago i want to say or maybe like at the beginning of 2020 but then the hand on the wall wasn't out yet and I have been able to recognize my flaws with not finishing series it is either because like the rest of the series isn't out yet aka what happened with this one and then I forget what happened in the books that I did read in the series and then it just completely like feels like a waste to just pick up the third book without knowing all the details and stuff like that let me just take a little tea break mm. So my plan is to give Truly Devious and The Vanishing Stare a reread to finally finish the original trilogy this year. Plus I also own The Box in the Woods, which is like the fourth book in the series, but I think it's like a spin-off version. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know what happens in the third one, but the question that I have with this being on my TBR is I want to host a read-along for this series to also have you guys back me up to finally continue on with this to pull through with it so my plan is to read truly devious with y'all in october then read the vanishing stare in november and finish the trilogy in december with the hand on the wall please let me know if you guys would be interested in that because then i could like host a live show discussing the book at the end of each month and maybe get some guest people to join as well the thing is in 2020 and 2021 i joined so many like read-alongs and i hosted them and i did so many live shows which i absolutely loved but it's been a long time since i've done that um and i miss it so let's do it again i guess let's read this together okay <laughs> i haven't even talked about truly Devious and what this is about I loved it at the time so I'm I'm, I'm really ready to give it a reread <laughs> basically we follow our main character who is gonna attend Ellingham Academy which is this private elite school like this boarding school yes <laughs> already excited about that and basically I think over a hundred years ago someone got murdered and like this creepy note was left behind signed off by truly devious now in the future our main character is gonna attend Ellingham Academy and is trying to solve this truly devious murder mystery but truly devious comes back and claims another student's life I can tell you already like it kind of sounds familiar to the Society for Soulless Girls but let me tell you, this one is like way, way, way better than that. Skip that book, please. <laughs> you get flashbacks to somewhere at the beginning of the 1900s, I believe, or maybe like 1930s, which I love that time period like so much. So you slowly get to know what happened then. The mystery becomes greater and greater and our main character in the now is trying to solve it whilst other things are happening as well. It is absolutely wonderful. Boarding school vibes are like a 10 out of 10, nay, 11 out of 10 in this book. <laughs> I have three to four more books to talk about with this TBR video, so let's grab them. Okay, I have them all. It's kind of like a mixture of murder mysteries and like the fantasy side of this TBR because I haven't talked about any fantasy books yet. So let's do that first, maybe? Both of them are again huge, um, especially this one, which is oh, so pretty. It's Ordinary Monsters by J.M. Miro. This book was published somewhere in like May or June this year. It's part of a new series and I will read the synopsis for you. 1882, north of Edinburgh on the edge of an isolated loch lies 
an institution of crumbling stone where a strange doctor collects orphans with unusual abilities. Sounds cool already. So, okay, <laughs> back to business. In London, two children with such powers are hunted by a figure of darkness, a man made of smoke. Charlie Ovid discovers a gift for healing himself through a brutal upbringing in Mississippi, while Marlow, a foundling from a railway fright, glows with a strange bluish light. When two grizzled detectives are recruited to escort them north to safety, they are confronted by a sinister, dangerous force that threatens to upend the world as they know it. What follows is a journey from the gaslit streets of London to the lochs of Scotland, where other gifted children, the Talents, have been gathered at Carndill Institute, and the realms of the dead and the living collide. As secrets within the Institute unfurl, Marlowe, Charlie, and the rest of the Talents will discover the truth about their abilities and the nature of the force that is stalking them. But the worst monsters sometimes come bearing the sweetest gifts. It kind of makes me feel like this would be Stranger Things, but set at the end of the 19th century <laughs> with just a super dark setting. Scotland already sounds amazing. I feel like this would tick all of the boxes that I would want in a fantasy. Just the mystery, detectives, the gothic setting of Scotland at a loch. I just don't know how to pronounce that word. It's very difficult for me. And I know that Leora from Books with Leo, one of my best friends, she read this when we went to and she absolutely adored it. So yeah, it just seems really amazing. And the book that I bought at Yalk myself is her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. I think a lot of you guys actually know that I absolutely adore Juno Dawson's contemporaries, especially Clean and Mead Marker. Those are my faves. I didn't love Wonderland or I don't know what that book was called again. This is her first adult fantasy. And she even like signed my book. To Sabine, Her Majesty greets you. I was so excited to meet her. Again, we'll be reading the synopsis <laughs> because my memory is fleeting. Hidden Among Us is a secret coven of witches. No as Her Majesty's Royal Coven, they protect crown and country from magical forces and otherworldly evil. But their greatest enemy will come from within. There are whisperings of a prophecy that will bring the coven to its knees, and four best friends are about to be caught at the center. Will Helena, Neumph, Leonie, and Elle be able to stop the prophecy before it's too late? Or will the differences that have seen them grow apart since childhood be too great to overcome? Life as a modern witch was never simple, but now it's about to get apocalyptic. It's a story of ancient prophecies and modern dating of sacred sisterhood and demonic frenemies. And when I talked to Juno Dawson about this book, she was like, it gets surprisingly spicy at some times. And it really deals with female friendship, but also female, female love. I just think it's going to be a wonderfully queer fantasy novel with witches, secret covens, and everything that you just want in a fantasy like that. So those are like the two fantasies that I would like to pick up. They're both part of a series and the sequels haven't come out yet. But the last two books that I want to talk about are both murder mysteries. And the first one, I'm doubting to pick up because again, the first in a series, I do own the rest of them, but I'm already gonna start so many series this autumn. So should I do it? That's the question. And that is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. Whenever I talk to people, not only to like my bookish friends online, but also to the customers that I have in the bookstore, and they either like buy this book or a sequel. And I tell them, damn, I, I still need to pick that up. I do own it though. They're like, go read it right now. It's so good and very, very addictive. So I believe that like a murder happened in the small town and someone has been like arrested for it. They're a suspect, but our main character, she just doesn't believe it. And she's kind of like trying to figure out the murder herself, I think. And she uses the case as a topic for her final year project. And she slowly starts to uncover secrets about the murder case. And it kind of has like mixed media in it as well. So like interviews or also text messages and case files. I just think this is going to be a really interesting experience as like a whole book. It's going to feel like you're watching a series maybe. That's kind of what I'm expecting from this. And then the last book that I have on my TBR feels like the epitome of a dark academia murder mystery. And it kind of sounds familiar to a secret history, which I do want to pick up, but I don't think gonna do it this year. I also don't own the book, but <laughs> let's get back to this one. And that is In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. It's about these six friends who go to a college reunion. And I believe like 10 years ago or something, a murder happened in their friend group, if I'm saying it correctly, but it was always unsolved. And some people, they want to like move on at this reunion, but others don't. Someone is determined to trap the real killer and to make the guilty pay. And lots of secrets will be 
revealed. I think Books and Lala absolutely adored this book and some of my friends as well. It just makes me so, so excited to pick this one up. And I'm just really excited, especially when I read the blurb, beautiful writing, juicy secrets and drum beat suspense. Like sign me up for that. <laughs> and those are all the books that I have here in Utrecht on my TBR. Let's go back to past Sabine. <laughs> okay guys, that was my fall autumnal dark academia witchy bitch TBR. I have so many words that I could use for this type of TBR. Let me know in the comments down below if you are currently reading, have read some of the books, and I really want to know your opinion on them. And also if you have other books on your TBR as well, let them know in the comments down below because I could always use some recommendations to add to my list, even though I already own enough books. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to check out Galatea. Click on the link in my bio. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or in the button down below and hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!